yourself in, give me some keys. Hi, I'm Diane Dayton with Cool Jazz Cafe. We're at the 27th Annual Boscov's Burks Jazz Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania. Catching up at the fabulous Doubletree by Hilton in downtown Reading and catching up with the fabulous Ollie Silk. Oh, thank you, Diane. Hey, How are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Thank you. You guys were on fire last night oh, with the thanks. show at Building 24. We had a great time and the audience were just, oh, just... Spectacular. It I couldn't was, have asked for any more, really. It was so much fun. Yeah, it was. It was really cool, really yeah. cool. Like the energy levels from right from the start, you know, that we kind of tailor made that show to be funky and cool right from the right from the off so it worked really well it was great and i was there because we got to do some facebook streaming too so if anybody wants to check that out you can just go to my facebook page as well and we want to promote your latest cd right. yeah 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 Here it is. so tell us about this one so this uh this this came out at the uh, end of last year um it was a project that i'd worked on for about three years actually, two and a half, three years. So it's kind of a bit slow in coming, but then my albums always are. That's another story, I get told off for that. But uh, yeah, I was I, really pleased with it. And it's got some of my good buddies that I've been able to meet and play with in the smooth jazz world on there. It's got like Steve Cole on there and mm. Althea Renee is on there. Uh, Rick Braun and Peter White are on there. So, you know, it, being in smooth jazz for yes, like 12 years now, I guess, <laughs> um, has just afforded me to kind of become friends with all these great artists and musicians and, and give them a call when I want something from them. It's so. <laughs> great to collaborate like that, isn't it? Oh, it's it's wonderful. And they are all so professional. Nick Colleone is on there and we, we all know how great Nick is and yeah. I needed to get him on a CD. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. And, and yeah, yeah, they just were all so good. They, they did their thing. I didn't, we didn't do it in person because obviously I'm in England. So mm -hmm. I sent them the songs, they recorded their parts, they sent them back. Easy as that, slot it in. All yeah. done. I can't believe it's been seven years since you and I have talked. I know. Back at the 20th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So you've been up to a lot of things, and you're doing a lot of touring and, you're, and playing with other people, too. Yeah, I do. That, you know, as a, as a sort of, as a nice sideline, I guess, um, and it, it feels like kudos for me as a keyboard player. Lots of these guys, when they come over to London, um, they'll come and play a few clubs in London and, and, and kind of call me up, and I've just become the first cool guy, which is, which is amazing, you know. Um, and so in the last couple of years, I've done things like we, we, we supported Barry Manilow with Dave Coz, which was a great mm -hmm. experience. Um, I've also been doing some musical directing at the Dubai Jazz Festival. So, you know, been all over the world, which is like something I never thought would happen. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, when guys come to London, when Peter White comes to London every year and Huge comes, mm -hmm. um, we, 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 we play, we hang. What was it like playing in Dubai? Because, you know, music does connect us. Mm. And it brings people together in a way like none other. What was it like there? It was an amazing, colourful experience that uh, I really would love to repeat again. I, I, we, we did three years there um, as part of the Jazz Festival. It was very... Uh, hard work there was lots you know because lots of artists would come over we had to rehearse in the day show at night rehearse in the day so and you know all of that under quite searing heat at times you know it's very hot over there mm -hmm. but we got to see some of the culture we got to see uh, I mean we got to see the the, the new Dubai you know and right. stay in the hotels and hang and you know be treated some to some of the ho best hospitality I've mm -hmm. ever seen. Mm -hmm. But then also, you know, we always made a point to go and see the old town and the spices and the mm. and the shawls and the beautiful food. Um, and yeah, it was just a, just a wonderful experience. I, I think even more so for the American guys that were coming over. It was okay. you know when you, when you do that kind of. 20 hour flight or whatever oh, it is yeah. from LA it's crazy you know mm -hmm. it really is the other side of the world for those mm -hmm. guys um, I think actually it feels more far removed for them than it did for us being in London but even so it still is something like yeah it's memories I'll never forget and the people the oh, people there yeah and the people there are so I, I, you don't know what to expect you don't mm -hmm. think you, you know don't think they're going to get it do they know what jazz is do they know what smooth jazz is but they were so receptive I mean we were getting five six thousand people 
every night coming to to watch this outdoor stage. Mm. And they'd have they'd have a, a, a like a straight ahead jazz group on first, and then we'd come with the smooth jazz second, and they went crazy for <laughs> it. I would, yeah, I was just totally taken aback. It was that, brilliant. That's absolutely fabulous. So this career that you now have, when what? How old were you when you say this actually turned into a career? Um, I think I was right around maybe 18 or 19 years old. I'd been playing keyboards for about seven years at that point. I'd gone through school and college, um, had a few casual bands, um, covers bands, soul bands, stuff like that, um, but not, not, not a huge amount. And then um, when it really became the real deal, I guess, was probably in about 99, when I was working with a friend of mine who was a bass player. We'd both gone through college together. Mm -hmm. We were both, both young. Um, and I had been working for a, cr a famous credit card company, which I won't mention, but uh, I was working for a credit card company okay. and the money was very good. Okay, good, good. <laughs> um, and the work wasn't good, but the money was good. Right. Um, and um, it afforded me to buy my first you know, music computer. Mm -hmm. It's something I'd wanted for a long time, but they really were unattainable at that point for a young kid, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I had this job, I kept it for about eight months. It was painful, but I got through it. And then I went, right, I've got my computer now. Um, and, and we just started making some music. Um, not with the intention of, of trying to achieve anything specific. We were mm -hmm. just hanging out, We'd, you know, we wrote some songs, and all of a sudden we, we can record these songs. Yes. And, it, and it actually sounds quite good. Wow, cool. okay. Yeah. And, and then someone, I think, I think it was maybe someone that my brother was connected with because he was a little older. Was in, was in the music business. They said, this is really good. I, I got a friend who actually owns a, a, a label. I could get this in front of him. We're like, no, really? <laughs> yeah. So sure enough, he did. And then we got a phone call. This is great. I, I'd like to put this out, you know, so we can get a budget for, for, for the artwork and we can press the CDs. And we were like, just not even 20 yet. And we were like, wow, wow. Okay. Yeah. This is cool. <laughs> so um, that was kind of the break we had. We, we got some shows in London. We got some radio play and things like that. And that mm -hmm. kind of just set the ball rolling. And you know, yeah, it's taken a lot of turns and twists sure. along the way, but um, eventually, about five years later, I got um, I got the record deal with the with the label that I'm on now, Tripping Records. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been there with them for twelve years now, and they've been very good to me. Never a dull moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's unbelievable, and yeah. the life of a musician is one that you don't you try not to plan for too much. It's probably best not to. Right. But you know, you wake up every day just thanking your lucky stars that you have such uh, yeah. a fun job. Yeah. You know? What do you see if you were to look in that crystal ball down the road? What would you like to happen? What do you see? I know you're not planning too much, but what would you like to come your way? I think um, I think I would really I, I would like a situation where smooth jazz has more of a renaissance. Maybe I, I, it's not necessarily that I thought that it's gone away. It's changed, no doubt. You'll, you'll agree with me on that. Um, I think when I first got into it, I was looking at these these guys that were, you know, selling hundreds of thousands of records, mm -hmm. and I want a piece of this, you know. And then as as time went on, the the, the scene got smaller, it got more intimate, and it is what it is today. But I I would love to see a situation where I could share my music even more often in the states. I mean, I still get to come over a few times a year, and it's nice. But you know, I think there's more. There's more. There's more markets out there that I'd really, and there's people that I'd like to reach out to that maybe don't know who I am yet, okay. even now. Um, America's big, you know, the, yes. the, and, and, and even coming up here to, to Berks and being in the kind of northeast area, you know, I've opened I've already in the first two days just opened some doors that I mm -hmm. didn't know were there, and there's some people. Hey. Ali, you know, we've, we've, we've heard your album, but now we've, we've seen you and like you're a visible person yeah. and we would love to have you come back, you know, and yeah. so it's just little things yeah. like that. You just make network, you know, right. Right. connections. So. Well, that's what we're doing right now. Exactly. We are connecting. Yeah. We are promoting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and where can we find more about you online? You can find me on, um, of course, my website, ollysilk.com. Um, O-L-I yeah. Silk. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Uh, and I try and keep that updated um, where possible. 
but also, I, you know, I have a, a social media presence as everybody does. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have an Instagram presence now because I was oh, getting, I was getting told off right. by my fellow band members so much. <laughs> you, 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 you're not on Instagram? Are you crazy? Everybody's using that. I was like, okay, yeah, okay. Right, right. So I now have an Instagram presence, and uh, I've been posting some photos from the shows oh, the last couple good. of days. So yeah. people can find me on there and Twitter, and you know, the, the usual outlets. And I, yeah, I love, I love to, to, to hear from people and Excellent. see what see what they're thinking and what they're up to. Well, that's great. Thank you for taking time oh, today. Man, it's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, thank my you pleasure. For taking time. And what we're going to do is we're going to let people see a little bit of your show last night. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. We're coming to you from the Burks Jazz Fest. One, two, three.